Okay. Great, 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 great. So I was going to come on and just share, this is going to be a quick one today, just share some uh, takeaways about WebinarCon. Let me share my screen. WebinarCon, we were able to sell out the event. There were nearly 200 people there. It all paid between four and five thousand dollars to be there. Nice chunk of change in terms of uh, ticket sales. Plus, we had uh, about one hundred and sixty thousand dollars worth of sponsors, sponsorships. The sponsorships um, pretty much covered everything. Let's see, audience view. So we had all of these different sponsors. So we had sponsors that paid anywhere from 5000 to 20000 to sponsor the event. And for, for an event with only, you know, with less than 200 people, that's really good. Um, Sean says, I know someone else just came back from WebinarCon. That's sick. Yeah. Yeah. It was going around. It's hard to do events without somebody getting sick these days. Um, so the lesson I take from WebinarCon is it's really about positioning, right? So we position this event as the event for elite level webinar marketers who want to do deals with other marketers, other webinar marketers. So folks come to WebinarCon to uh, do cross promotions, to find someone that can promote their webinar and find webinars that they can promote. And they know that just one deal from the event can result in a lot of, a uh, lot more than they're paying, right? The other thing is sponsors are willing to uh, give us up to 20 grand, not for the number of people that we have at the event, but for the quality of people we have at the event, because they know that these are some, these are the leaders in the industry. These are po folks that have a reach that has, that have influence folks that if they got behind their brand could really push it. People that have some type of reach to have some type of audience that collectively in the room, all those folks reach over a billion people. It's just like, you know, the, the amount of power that is just from like 200 people each having their own reach collectively. It's very powerful. This is why folks are willing to, to, uh, to pay. So if we had to position this thing, any, you know, sometimes it's just the way you position things in your marketing. If we had a positioned it differently, if we didn't nail the positioning, and it wouldn't be what it is, right? So we positioned it as a high level event, top online marketers in the world. And two things like the topic of webinars is a high level topic, you know, that attracts people who are influencers, people who are leaders, people who want to do public speaking and presentations. So the, that topic and also the price point, you know, I think it started at four thousand, started at thirty five hundred, and went up to five thousand. So that price point attracts high level people. So the whole positioning, the brand, the price point. The other thing we did was uh, we had a list here. We made this thing called the VIP guest list, and we started posting some of the power players who would be at WebinarCon, and we had this image done of all these guys, and these are just attendees, right? All these guys are attending WebinarCon. So it kind of created this, this uh, degree of what, what we call FOMO, right? Fear of missing out. Where people see their friends are going to the event and they're like, wow, look at all these cool people going to the event. I want to go there too. I want to meet these guys. Or I want to see some of my friends. So this this is not everybody, but just by doing that, it really uh, helped with our marketing. That was one of the other things. And uh, 
on the page. We had reviews from prior attendees here. All these videos from successful people touting webinar con. So <coughs> it was a successful event. We actually sold a lot of tickets too using this uh, Facebook Messenger thing. It's this uh, chat box. So if you have a page on uh, Facebook, they'll give you a uh, chat that you could put on your site. And uh, you can contact people using Messenger. So that was a cool thing. We actually sold a bunch of tickets just by people being able to answer a simple question, get their questions answered using this chat box. In terms of the, uh, the speakers, just a quick takeaway from each one. Takeaway I got from Onyx presentation was um, when he does his webinars, like most people will do a webinar promotion and it'll just be a, a week long promotion and then replay expires and that's it. He converts more sales because he extends his webinar promotion to two weeks. So he'll say, okay, the replay is expiring and the replay will expire, but the offer doesn't expire. And what he'll do is he'll take the webinar, chop it up into three videos and extend the promotion an additional week. And then say, hey, check out this video. Video one talks about X, Y, Z. Video two talks about this, video three. And so that's how he extends. The replay is over, but he chops it up into three short videos and continues promoting that. So he's able to make like 30, 40% more sales because he extends the promotion an additional week. One of the things I talked about um, was how to emulate a, uh, a webinar, how to apply techniques to a webinar based on the number one thing that sells the most high ticket stuff. So if you think about the highest ticket purchase most people ever make in their life, it's real estate, it's buying a, their first home, buying a home in general. And if you think about the marketing strategy behind Real estate, the number one marketing strategy for real estate that sold more high ticket sales than anything else, it's an open house. So I talk about like how to turn your webinar into an open house in terms of people there know that there's a limited amount of the thing, like a an open house is only one house being sold. And the reason they bring everybody together at the same time is because they want to have people kind of competing against each other, right? They want people to feel like if I don't get this house, somebody else is going to get it because a lot of people want it. They want people to see that there's a demand for that house by bringing everybody together at the same time to look at the house. So open house, you can apply the same concept to webinars by having people um, raise their hand and say they're interested in, in buying or they, they're qualified to buy and then say, okay, we have 100 people that say they're qualified and interested in this program, but we're only, we only taking 20 spots or whatever it might be. And as long as you have a valid reason and it's legit, like our setup team, at this time can only take 20 spots, you know, some type of scarcity gives people a reason to buy right then. And that social proof from seeing that other people are going to take that spot. If you don't creates an environment where people want to buy. So some of the things I talked about, uh, Andy didn't speak. Uh, 
Jason Flatlin, he talked about some advanced uh, sales techniques, how to overcome your audience, their, their objections. All right, so he does, in his webinar, he'll do a frequently asked questions segment where all the objections that people have will be addressed during that frequently asked questions segment. So like by addressing all the objections and clarifying and answering them, people really have no reason left not to buy. And that's one of his big things is uh, make sure everybody's objections are addressed. Even he, he, he'll go so far as to have bonuses that address the objections. Like, so if one of the objections is, you know, I'm not technical enough to set this up, he'll have a bonus where it'd be like a done for you setup. We'll set this up for you. That type of thing. Um, Danielle Leslie, she talked about um, finding your flex when, when, on social media, finding your flex. And it's like this thing, like everybody has a, a different type of flex. Like some people show their fancy cars and their houses. Some people show their, their freedom where they, at, uh, you know, spend time on vacations or whatnot. One of my things is I show passive income from real estate. So like on social media, I'll, I'll show pictures of me standing in front of my buildings. I have a bunch of different buildings that I own because I've been doing real estate since 2006. So that's kind of like my flex. And I didn't even think about it in terms of uh a flex is just something I do and I encourage people to do, but everybody has their own flex. So you have to find what that is for you. And that becomes an attractive thing that makes people want to follow you online. Like maybe, uh, maybe you're able to retire early. That could be a flex. Maybe you're able to uh, retire your wife. Maybe you're able to uh, give, give back, give to charities, take money from online and, and give to uh, kids in need or something, you know, any, any type of thing that is an attractive quality that people say, that's so cool. I want to do that too, is a flex. And you have to find what that is for you. And, it, you know, and it, you don't have to be a multimillionaire and big shot to have a flex. It's just a matter of um, finding something that fits for you. Uh, Matt Basak. Honestly, I didn't watch his presentation, so I couldn't tell you what he said. Uh, he's a big email marketing guy, so I'm pretty sure he went through his email follow-up. One of the things I learned from Matt, I'm pretty sure he talked about it, was um, he does split tests with, with outgoing emails. So he'll send, before he sends an email out to his entire list, he will send out, so say if he has a list of 100,000 subscribers, he'll send out an email to maybe 10,000 of those subscribers. And it'll be two different emails. One will go out to 5,000. The other one go, will go out to another 5,000. And they will each have different subject lines. So he's trying to find the best subject line to use. So he split tests subject lines and he split tests different things in the email that gets people to click. So he'll send out to a short segment, split testing two different subject lines, two different call to actions in the email, whatever it might be. And then once he finds the winner, he will send that out to his entire list, All right? So he sends out to a short little segment, finds the winner between the two tests he's doing, and then he'll use the winner to send out to his entire list. So. That helps with uh, his open rate, helps with his click rate, helps him make more money overall with his emails. Mike Phil Same talked about some advanced strategies for uh, the replay se segment for webinars. Like he turns his replay into, he's serious about the replay. He turns it into like a big, a big thing. Like he focuses more of his time on the replays than anything else. Whereas he makes money on the live webinar, but sometimes the live webinar is kind of like a decoy to show people what they missed. Like, oh, you missed this thing, but you can catch the replay 
and then he goes really hard on the uh, with his replay promotions. Uh, Lamar Tyler talked about um, taking a webinar and then turning it into a multi-day event. So he uses his webinar script in a live seminar. So he has these live seminars called uh, Traffic Sales and Profit, TSP Live is the name of his in-person event. And he uses actually a webinar script and expands that and turns it into a, a three-day event using the same content and just expands on each part. And that's that's what he, you know, he makes a lot of money doing that. So if you think about a webinar, you know, you have your introduction, you have your big opportunity, you have your content pieces, like three, three, usually like three to five secrets or aha moments. You have your transition into the close, into your close, and you have your offer, then you have your your close. Um, so he basically takes each each of those parts and then spreads it out over three days, an in-person event. And then on the third day, he's uh he's selling his uh program, his mastermind. So he has over 300 people that pay him like twenty-five thousand, between twenty and twenty-five thousand for his uh mastermind. So he's doing some serious numbers. Three hundred times let's say 20 that's what six million dollars so the beauty of having a, a mastermind is is mostly profit are right? you just really bringing people together i think he hires some coaches and stuff but he has 300 people paying over twenty thousand dollars a year to be part of his mastermind and he has coaches that service them but it's, I, would, I, I would imagine it's probably 80 percent profit from there on uh rich shefferin rich shefferin talked about some out of the box marketing strategies he had this one marketing strategy where he actually had a box a box with a question mark on it and in the background he, he did this video in the background of the video he had people that were stuffing the box. Like they were like, it was like an assembly line going on where they were like stuffing the box with like cool stuff, but you couldn't tell what, what they were doing, what they were putting in these boxes, but it, you could just see they were busy like stuffing these boxes. And basically he said that this box has a thousand dollars worth of value in it. I'm not going to tell you what's in it. I just want you to trust me and this is how um, I'd like to proceed by earning your trust. And I want to establish that I'm someone trustworthy. So all I want you to do is pay me $30 and you're going to get a thousand dollars worth of stuff worth of value in this box. So it's just a box with a question mark on it. He said that promotion was amazing. Like people just, it, it, it helped them build trust with his brand too. Cause when they got these boxes in the mail, it had a lot of cool stuff in it and um it established like when he says something is valuable it really is right so that first whenever you have a customer that first interaction with the customer is you know if the customer has a good experience that customer is likely to buy additional stuff so by starting out that way with the customer they give me thirty dollars i'm going to give you a thousand dollars worth of value in this box it helps brand him and helps uh, him to gain trust with his customers. So that promotion was amazing. Uh, Alaric talked about YouTube ads. So with YouTube ads, he talks about giving a lot of content up front in the YouTube ad itself and then leading with content. So anyone who watches that already got a lot of value from you and they're they're pretty much warmed up when they click the link and go to the page and they want to watch more from you. And he said that, um, so he promotes webinars. So his model is YouTube ad with, with good content, teaching a strategy, and then 
sending folks to a webinar to get additional details. Like, so you might say I have a seven part uh, secret, seven, seven secrets to doing X, Y, Z. I'm gonna give you the first secret right now in this video. And then if you're interested in seeing the other six secrets, click here and watch my webinar presentation. And then people watch the webinar presentation and then he sends them to a, uh, so he doesn't sell right on the webinar. He sends them to a uh, application to uh, to schedule a phone call. And then he closes right on over the phone. He has a sales team that closes over the phone. So it's a YouTube ad to automated webinar to book an appointment to a phone phone sale. That's his model. He makes over $10 million a year doing that. And he sells uh, like a done with you YouTube ad program where he helps you get your YouTube ads set up. And I think it's, I forget what he charges, maybe 7,500 or something. But that's his model. Uh, Caleb Odell talked about some advanced copywriting uh, stuff. So he's, he's a, this, a, a protege of uh, Gary Halbert. Gary Halbert was um, one of the top direct marketing copywriters of all time. So Caleb, he talks about how to take away every objection your customer has by having a done for you aspect to your marketing. So if one of the, one of the objections is I don't know how to get traffic. I can't afford to get traffic. He'll actually add in a component to his offer that gets people traffic so that they have no objection at all and everything is completely done for you. So he hires people on Upwork and on different freelance sites that will uh, do different services like traffic generation and he'll increase the, he'll, he'll throw that into his offer, raise the price a little bit but it's like a one-stop shop for everything you need in that one offer. And that works really well. His webinars can really, really well. I got to get, get one added to the apps program. Nehemiah Davis, he talked about uh, five-day challenges where he'll, he'll uh, instead of doing a regular webinar, he'll do a five-day challenge. So he'll say, so say for instance, it's the, uh, I think one of his challenges is a digital marketing success challenge where he shows you how to start a digital business, gets people into this five day challenge, spends an hour with them a day for five days, gives them assignments and different things like that. Does some mindset stuff, teaching people how to go, how to go all in. That's part of the challenge, teaching people how to, you know, play big, how to invest in themselves and all that type of stuff. He even has a, a, a day where he talks about like credit, like how to how to get credit, how to get access to capital. And then he sells his, his mastermind. It's like 25 grand. So he goes through all this stuff. The capital part, how to get your credit right, how to get access to funds, obviously, you know, helps when he's trying to sell a 25 grand program. But he he makes, he's done challenges where he's made like millions of dollars. And uh, so he just runs ads to an uh, opt-in page saying, take the five-day challenge for X, Y, Z. Anytime you can get leads interested in a, in a topic and you could spend time with those leads and actually give them value and show them what's possible, inspire them, show, you what, show them what you've, you've accomplished. Anytime you have an audience like that, where you're giving value to and they see you as the leader, it's not difficult to sell a product on the back of that, especially if there's a uh, limited number of people. So say for like, so we've, we've done this before where we um, have an online summit. And then, so we had one for WebinarCon actually, like we, had, we did a virtual version of WebinarCon where we had two offers. One offer was will was a 12-day coaching program, 12-week 12, 12 coaching program where we 
help you set up your own webinar. That was $15,000. It was a $15,000 offer where we'll spend 12 weeks with you. After the 12 weeks, you'll have a webinar set up. That was one offer. The other offer was if you already have a webinar, you could join our mastermind where we'll find people to help promote that webinar for you. Right. And we guarantee that you'll, you'll make at least $100,000. That was a $30,000 offer. So we spent three or four days with folks teaching, sharing with, working with the with webinars. And then we pitched those two different offers. And we said, like, listen, we're taking 50 people max for the uh, Done With You webinar creation 12-week program. and we're taking, uh, I think it was 20 people as part of the uh, mastermind. So we had those limits in there and we had like a thousand people on these, on the challenge, not the challenge, but the summit that we did. And we didn't quite get the numbers. We ended up getting, I think it was 34 people to pay 15 grand for the uh, done with you webinar creation program. And I think we had 12 people pay the 30 grand for the uh, webinar wealth club mastermind. So it works out. It's just a model that, that works. Like you just get people in a room, give them a lot of value, show them what's possible and say like, listen, we want to work with a limited number of you and we're going to help you succeed. And then people are willing to pay for that. It's just a model that works. Uh, Dan Lehman, he, uh, did a session about split testing. So he split tests everything. I teased him like, like we were at the restaurant. I'm like, Dan's gonna split test the, the filet mignon versus the New York strip <laughs> to see which one to get based on what, what the orders are in the room. So we were at a steakhouse called Fleming's that uh, all the speakers and the sponsors went to. We uh, took everybody out to dinner during the event. So he uh, he so he starts out he split tests everything right so he'll split test headlines on the page he'll split test different colors he'll split test different price points and one of the things that he said that produced a lot of money as a result of a split test was he had he does this thing where he'll tell people um, you can like so so say for instance if the if the if the price is a thousand dollars, he'll say um, you could uh, start get started today for just ninety seven dollars, right? And then you'll have ten additional payments of or twelve additional payments of ninety seven dollars, right? And then after they pay the initial ninety seven, he'll tell them. Um, Instead of paying twelve hundred to you know twelve payments of ninety seven or whatever it might be, you could just make one payment now of of eight hundred and you'll have no further payments to make so a surprisingly large number of people take that because after they paid the initial ninety seven they know that now they have eleven more payments of ninety seven to make, and now they could save by knocking off two pay like we'll knock off two payments for you. So you could uh, save if you order right now, if you, so it'll be like an upsell, but it'll be for the same product. It'll just be like, you know, save two payments by paying in full today. And that works a lot for uh, his offers. And it just changes the numbers for him. Like, cause like the, the, the fact is like, if someone is paying $97 a month, most people are gonna drop out within like the fourth or fifth month anyway. Right, they're gonna be like, oh, I don't need this anymore, and they'll cancel. But by getting them to pay a lump sum, even if it's just a discounted lump sum, you're able to get more money from that customer, and they they see it as they're they're getting a good deal. So that tends to work really well. So let me see, what are you guys saying in the questions? Those are some of the insights from WebinarCon. Um, I'm gonna end this a little early because I'm really sick. <laughs> uh, can you please have a Black Friday 
Cyber Monday sale for WebinarCon recordings. We actually plan to do that. So I'll, I'll send that out. Uh, where is Onik getting his webinar registrations? What traffic source? Onik uses Facebook and YouTube primarily. One of the things Onik talked about too is his mindset in regards to traffic. So he doesn't have to break even. He, he's willing to take a loss up front. So he tells his folks if if he's getting just 70% back, so he's willing to take a 30% loss for the first month on these leads that he buys, knowing that he's going to acquire customers and make the money back on the second month, the third month, the fourth month. So if he's running a campaign and he's spending $1,000 a day and making back $700 a day, he's losing $300 a day. But that's just on the first month. So the second month, he's, he's getting those leads. He can make the money back. So, so it's like whoever can spend the most money wins. And, and when you're able to float money where you're not expecting to make a profit right away, you, you could spend as much as possible, acquire those customers, and make money on the back end. So it's a different mindset in terms of traffic. But that's basically how he looks at it. So he doesn't have to actually make a profit for two, three months from the leads that he buys. But he knows that long term, each lead that he buys is going to be worth a lot of money to him long term. So he kind of invests. He looks at traffic as an investor. He invests in traffic, invests in customer acquisition, and doesn't care if he doesn't make a profit the first month. As long as he has those customers, he can sell additional things to. Uh, what else you guys have? Matt discussed creating open loops and then closing them. Yeah, what's up, Gary? Yeah, that's one of the things Matt discussed, creating uh, open loops in people's minds where they have to, he, he locks them in. Well, so say for instance, if I say to you, um, you know, I have a really good strategy, I'm gonna share with you in just a minute, but first let me talk to you about this. So that created an open loop. You're like, okay, what is that strategy that you said you were about to discuss? <laughs> and it makes you wanna keep watching the presentation because I created that loop that needs to be closed in your mind. So that's probably a bad example, but that's uh, the gist of it. Uh, have you found out what happened to your recent employee? Did she eventually get back? Yeah, so Tiffany um, had a mental breakdown. And she told me she had a mental breakdown. I know she had some issues with her family and whatnot. And I don't know the extent of it, but she said that she's just taking some time to heal. And um, yeah, it's, uh, you know, my, my prayers go out to her. And, you know, I'm going to have to go ahead and find someone else to uh, do the onboarding. But I've, I've just been doing it. It's been pretty cool, actually, doing the onboarding, just hearing the questions that uh, people ask and where people are coming from and, you know, just showing up for people and, you know, helping, helping people. Honestly, I should, you know, if I'm doing one-on-one -on -one coaching, I should be get, getting paid a lot more. But it ain't really about the money. It's about you know, making sure people are okay with the product that they bought and, and that they're uh, able to get up to speed fast and, and succeed with it. So that's been a cool little, little experience doing those myself. Uh, can you set up a webinar con recording sale where we can buy one presentation at a time, a la carte? Uh, we probably we're too lazy to do that. <laughs> we're just going to sell all the recordings in a bulk, like all together. It's not going to be an a la carte thing. Although that's a decent idea. Um, how much is Onik paying up front for these Facebook or YouTube leads for each lead? Um, for each lead, he, he probably pays around 15 to $20 per. So he's running traffic to webinars. He's one of the few people that um, 
that I know, well, he has some some really cool stuff that he does. But um, yeah, so yeah, fifteen to twenty dollar leads usually for webinar registrations, and he's just able to scale it up like crazy. Honestly, I you can get it for for cheaper, but he uh, I don't know what they do. <laughs> he's happy with paying that because he's going for massive amounts of traffic. Like the guy's spending like a lot of money on traffic. Uh, well, if you think about it, right, if you do the math, if you spend $15 on a webinar registration lead, say you get a thousand leads, that's $15,000. And if you have, say, if you have a 2000 he has a $2,000 product, $2,000 product, a thousand leads, you just need... How many sales would you need? A thousand to make. So you spent fifteen thousand dollars on leads. So say, so that's a thousand leads. Say half of them, half of them actually watch the webinar. So that's five hundred people that watch the webinar. And if he can convert at two percent of those five hundred people, then that's ten sales of a two thousand dollar product. So that's twenty thousand dollars in in uh revenue for a fifteen thousand uh, dollar lead expense does that make sense fifteen dollars a lead get a thousand leads that's fifteen thousand dollars out of those thousand leads maybe five hundred watch the webinar five hundred leads five hundred people watching the webinar if you convert two percent on a $2,000 product as 10 sales of 2,000, that's the $20,000 revenue for $15,000 in ad expense. Is Onyx sending these to web webinar recordings, not live webinars? Yeah, he, he sends it to uh, automated evergreen webinars. That's his thing. Uh, Jack says, actually, it took me a while to set up PayPal with Thrivecart due to they required a business PayPal account. Yeah, it doesn't cost anything to set up a business PayPal account. It's literally just going into your uh, PayPal and clicking a button. Uh, all right, so I'm going to end it here because I'm losing my voice. <laughs> and I'm like getting like the chills. But appreciate you guys coming on. Hopefully you got something valuable from this. And um, we will talk to you again next time. Thank you, guys. I'll send this recording out when I get a chance. Take care. Happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy the time with your family. Have a happy and healthy holiday. And I will talk to you again soon. Take care.